Let's get to our Matt Rascone. He's showing us what's happening outside. He's actually in North Fairfield in Huron County right now. Matt, what does it look like right now out there? Yeah, guys, what a night and last night and then what a day today. So much cleaning happening across these two counties in Huron County and then in Ashland County. We also visited out there and it's been interesting driving around and trying to look for some of this damage. It's been very hit or miss here and there across these counties. Uh, but the worst of it that we've seen so far has been right here in North It looks like uh, Matt's shot froze there where he is. The service might not be great, but what he was saying is that there's a lot of debris. You know, when he got to the area, there were several trees split apart, several things happening. And it looks like Neil Fisher uh, is also live for us right now where there also may be some damage. So let's get to Neil right now. Neil, you there? Hey, good afternoon, Laura. That's right. Uh, we're getting a closer look at the damage here in Salem Township this afternoon. One of the hardest hit areas that I've seen covering this storm last night as it came through as well as today. The county officials tell me more than a dozen homes have been impacted by this, including the ones behind me right now. Uh, we know that three homes have been completely destroyed by these storms, um, as well as eight homes having major damage and six others being affected by the storm. There are trees and pieces of metal thrown all over here in Ottawa County. We've seen farming equipment destroyed as well as different vehicles with massive pieces of wood coming right through their windshields. The impact being felt all throughout this community. House, there, the, the more damage is to the south side of the house. There's like um, beams coming through the walls and um, yeah, the barns are gone, but uh, windows broken. So the house is pretty much, I would think intact, but until we get someone to look at it, you just never know what you're gonna find. The Red Cross has helped three families here in Ottawa County that needed a place to stay, but county officials say they haven't had a severe weather impact storm like this since 2010. So coming up at five o'clock, we will hear from the Ottawa County Emergency Management Agency um, about being so fortunate that there were no injuries reported during last night's storm. And one thing I do want to point out is that utility crews have been here throughout the afternoon working to get power restored to this community. And like Matt was saying, just different areas across no, Northeast Ohio and Northern Ohio, we've seen metal scrapping thrown hundreds of yards in these fields out here in Salem Township. So we're going to send it over to Jason right now. Jason, I know you were covering this storm firsthand last night. Absolutely, Neil, and we already always appreciate those field reportings. As Neil was just saying there, debris thrown hundreds, uh, hundreds of yards across the area. He was over in Ottawa County, so we do still have some storm damage surveys from the National Weather Service in Ottawa County, Huron County, as well as Sandusky County, and we are still collecting data from those areas this afternoon and they'll likely carry into the evening hours. What we do have is our first preliminary report from National Weather Service dictating what that storm did down in Ashland County. This is near the village of Nankin, which is just to the west, I believe, of Polk. And we were talking about that later into the evening hours. So we now have an EF zero rating for this tornado that was reported near the village of Nankin, 85, 85 mile per hour. Uh, peak winds with that storm and it traveled a path of 1.2 miles. So you can see that max width was roughly around 300 yards. That was with that one particular storm. So again, we still have three more counties that we're going to be talking about for the rest of the evening here. I want to take it kind of back where you can see what that damage did in that area when we were tracking these storms yesterday evening. So this is sort of a 24 hours loop. We're now into Friday here, but one of the things that we have to take note is all of that activity happened in a very very rapid fashion. That system is now over towards the east. Now it's becoming a I-95 corridor problem down to near DC, Baltimore, moving up through Philadelphia, as well as New York City. Our next four at four is going to keep our temperatures in the 60s. We have widespread cloud cover right now outside, so we're likely going to have temperatures a little bit more subdued especially in some areas north and also east, especially rural areas with a due north wind. That due north wind is a cooling wind. So we're likely going to have some chilly temperatures out there tonight as well as Saturday night. We'll have all those details coming up a little bit later in the broadcast, but we also have some new data in from Isabel about some power outages. Isabel? Yeah, that we do, Jason. We're going to go ahead and take a look at power outages now across the area. 
So this is current Sandusky County, as you can see, reporting nearly 2000 outages still over in Huron County. Just under 1000 people are without power right now and over in Ottawa County, 350 customers still without power.